Statues open. Copy, hatch open. Hatch open, Karen. Copy, hatch open and stowed. Emergency MPEV coming closed. Your next step will be staggering switch throws, power to bat. Okay, here we go. EV-1, powers in bat. EV-2, power to bat. Copy that. Check that your display switch is, switch is functional. It is. You too. Okay, Luca, on the UIA, you can take power for EV-1 and 2, two switches to off. Power EV-1 is off. Power EV-2 is off. Confirm LEDs are off. LEDs are off. Four. You can now remove your SCU from the DCM. Roger, in work. EV-2 in work. EV-1, SCU removed, stowed in pouch, and DCM cover in place. Copy. EV-2, the DCM, the DSU is removed, and I'm storing it in the pouch. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, Spacewalk Officer Ernie Bell confirming to Flight Director David Korth that uh, the start time of today's spacewalk uh, marked at 7.02 a.m. Central Time uh, with the uh, two crew mates uh, out about to uh, exit the Quest airlock, Cassidy and Parmitano, uh, flipping uh, their battery power switches to the on position. Again, uh, the official start time of today's spacewalk marked at 7.02 a.m. Central Time. Max hot, EV-1. EV-2, Max hot. Water switch to on. EV-1, water on. EV-2, water on. Check your DCM is blank and bite off. Blank, no bite. EV-1. EV-2, blank, no bite. Temperature control valve, three to max as you want. Copy. EV2. And Houston, um, for step 11, would you like a status um, per the cuff checklist? And Karen, we just need the gauge only. Okay, copy that. EV-1, 4.3 on the gauge. EV-2, 4.2 on the gauge. Okay, I guess it's daylight now for another 15 minutes or so, so you might want your visors down. Copy. At this point, I'll hand it over to Shane. You guys have a good time out there, okay? Thanks a lot, Karen. Nice work. Thanks, Karen. Shane, good morning to everybody in Houston. Great to be with you. Good morning, Chris and Luca, and uh, we copied your tethers earlier. The only thing we need to check is Luca's green hook. Uh, check that that is locked. And Wait, my green hook, once I find it, I can see it probably easier. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Luca's green hook is closed and locked, Shane. Okay, copy that. Uh, one warning before you head out, there's a sharp edge hazard on the port aft portion of the airlock circular handrail and face one of the cedar rail. And with that, we are ready for you to uh, open the thermal cover. Okay,
Flight surgeon reporting good biomedical data coming from both Cassidy and uh, Parmitano. The spacewalk underway officially uh, started at 7.02 a.m. Central Time. The crew uh, about to open the outer thermal cover. Uh, the hatch is open already. Spacewalk underway. Cassidy will be uh, stepping outside to begin uh, the fifth spacewalk of his career. He uh, will go out the hatch first. The International Space Station flying over the uh, Southern Arabian Sea, south of the Saudi Peninsula, at an altitude of 263 statute miles. Closed and locked on the forward. Both safety tethers are closed and locked. Did you copy? Just help that bag along if you don't mind. Feels like it's kind of stuck on some piece of hardware. Yes, I can see the, the okay, should be seen now. Yep, I see it. Look oh, nice, stuck again. Should be seen now. Yep, got it. All right, Luca. I am out. I can see you. You are welcome to come on out whenever. My bag's out of your way and you're ready. Yeah, I'm gonna start. And Luca, just a reminder, you're gonna come out with the uh, ormates and the rets. The fish finger ready? Copy that, Shane, in work. The ormate is uh, the acronym, if you will, for the Optical Reflector Materials Experiment uh, that uh, Parmitana will be retrieving from the far starboard side of the truss of the International Space Station, along with the uh, other material science experiment known as Missy 8. Uh, that Missy 8 experiment was installed on the STS-134 mission by Drew Feustel and Greg Shamatov on the first of four spacewalks conducted during that penultimate flight of the space shuttle. The Ormate was installed by Mike Fossum and Ron Garin during their spacewalk two years ago during the final shuttle mission, STS-135. They were station crew members at the time. I read it to the ormate, the, the ormate cover, and I have deleted it from that fish finger, and I'm ready to come out. Jane, how's your video? And Luca, we copied. Just want to make sure you have the ret from the uh, fish on finger Luca. on the ormate. is from the ormate to my key bar. Is that correct? Yeah, Luca, there should be one that came with it on the fish stringer. You should have taken that ret with you. Right. That's the one I have. The one is already on, I erected the one on the old mate to my T bar and it's coming with me. That's a good config. Thanks, Luca. And uh, for the good. video, we'll get you in about right. eight more minutes or so. We'll get video. Okay. Green lights. And uh, I can see your manual isolation valve is closed and down. Your deploy handle is closed and down. Mini workstation looks secure. I see you working on the forming. 
lot okay. of the others, but they look all organized. Nice job. Hey, Chris. I mean, look at you. I see that the BRT little rep is hooked to the mini workstation, so. All right. Let me just tell me what you need me to turn to. Okay, I think. Chris Cassidy performing what are known as buddy checks on his spacewalking mate, Luca Parmitano, who now uh, is the first Italian to walk in space and the first European Space Agency astronaut to conduct a spacewalk in five and a half years since Hans Schlegel did so during the STS-122 mission in February of 2008 that delivered the European Columbus module to the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. Your uh, minor isolation valve on the sister is down, and so is the deployment. And to me, you're looking a good config. Very good. All right. And we will, uh, I'm going to head out. I'm closing the thermal cover. Thermal cover is now closed. Copy, thermal cover closed. And Chris, uh, you can head to Z1. Copy that. And uh, Luca, you can do some translation adaptation if need be. Then you can head out to S1 via the CETA spur and do not fair lead at the base of the spur. Copy, I'm recovering my local center. Cassidy and Parmitano now will divide and conquer as uh, Cassidy will move to the Z1 truss at the center portion of the station's backbone to begin the setup work for the replacement of the uh, space to ground transmitter receiver controller box while Parmitano uh, will make his way out to the uh, starboard truss of the station uh, to begin work to retrieve these two material science experiment packages. Z1 toolboxes and uh, uh, cautions. Avoid contact with heat pipe radiators, the SASA high and low gain antennas and radiative surfaces, and the TRC Z93 paints. Do not use the TRC connector bracket for restraint or stability loads. Copy all. We're just a couple of minutes away uh, from uh, regaining a television downlink capability from the International Space Station through our tracking and data relay satellite system. At that point, uh, we should be getting our first helmet camera views from Cassidy and Parmitano as they uh, begin uh, the setup work uh, for their variety of tasks today. Uh, Chris Cassidy's helmet camera will carry the ghosted uh, number 20 on the lower right-hand corner of your screen when you see his view. Luca Parmitano's helmet camera uh, is number 17. I'm on Z1, Shane. I'm on face one, Shane. Copy both. Chris, you're going to stow the bag on 6057 and 6058 with the hinge aft. Copy that. Hey, Luke, I got uh, some warnings, cautions, and notes for you whenever you're ready. I'm ready to copy now. Okay, Luca, warning, do not touch the hinge side while closing the Missy Peck. A caution is avoid contact with the, the deployed Missy and silver avionics boxes on the Expa, and make sure you keep your tether fair lead free of the Missy. Also note, uh, avoid side loads when installing the cover on the Ormates. Uh, Missy pit pins do not come all the way out of the socket. Thanks. A lot of acronyms there offered by um, Spacewalk uh, Capcom Shane Kimbrough here in Mission Control. Uh, the PEC, uh, referred to as the Payload Experiment Container, uh, in which uh, the Missy 8 or Material Science Experiment is located on the starboard truss of the station that Parmitano will be uh, retrieving. Uh, this uh, particular uh, experiment was deployed during the STS-134 mission uh, of the final flight of the shuttle Endeavour two years ago. 
collecting data for researchers at the Naval Research Lab. The XPA that was referred to is uh, the acronym for the Express Pallet Adapter, uh, one of the uh, mounting uh, brackets on which the Missy 8 is located. That ORMATE experiment uh, is an optical reflector materials uh, science experiment uh, that is located in uh, the same vicinity on the starboard truss. So there's a view of both of those uh, material science experiments that uh, basically collect data on the effect of uh, the uh, low uh, Earth orbit environment on a variety of different materials. Uh, this, these experiments uh, co-investigated uh, by uh, the Defense Department, NASA, and uh, a variety of industry contractors. Yeah, sorry, Luke, we dropped out there. Um, when you start heading Zenith, you're going to fair lead inboard of the Sarge handrails and outboard on ELC-2. Uh, negative, Shane, I need to know which, which hook I detached and, and the drop on the 3200. Uh, sorry there, Luca. I misunderstood you. You need your green hook on 3200. Green hook on 3200. Copy. While uh, Parmitano is out uh, on the uh, far starboard uh, truss of the station, uh, he'll be taking a variety of photos of these two material science experiment packages, as well as spending a, a minute or so uh, taking a variety of photos of the huge alpha magnetic spectrometer that is located uh, on the uh, starboard uh, truss uh, of the uh, orbital laboratory. Uh, the AMS uh, that has been collecting uh, data for the past two years uh, also was uh, deployed out on the starboard truss during the STS-134 mission two years ago. Hey, Luca, can you repeat that? Yes, sir. My left hand stayed a way better going from the green earth camp to the Hey, Luca, we copy, and uh, we're good with that. Thanks. And I'm ready to continue. Hey, Shane, to tag you up, I've got the uh, must all stack, must your to handrail 6059. The jaws are locked, and... Uh, I have transitioned to the nine inch socket, good pull test. Copy all, Chris, and I want to verify you have the round scoop um, installed on the failed SGTRC. The round scoop is installed on the failed SGTRC, A firm. Copy that. Next for you, Chris, is to get the spare SGTRC and install it in the mud and defector. That's complete. Okay, copy complete. Uh, next, you can get in position and BRT to the uh, SCANT boom handrail and uh, configure your PGT Bravo 1 counter 2. Bravo 1 counter 2 is set. Like it'll deliver 12 foot pounds if we ask it to. And I'm going to work on the forward. Bolts first. Copy, expect 10 to 13 turns. Wasting little time, Chris Cassidy already at the uh, Z1 truss, uh, looking straight at a pair of space to ground antennas that are associated with the uh, station's KU band communication system. As uh, he begins uh, to work with a uh, high powered uh, screwdriver, basically uh, known as uh, a pistol grip tool. Uh, that is designed uh, to unbolt uh, a variety of uh, bolts and fasteners uh, that will release the failed space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller box uh, from its location on the Z1 truss at the center section of the station's backbone. Copy. 
King Lord on the on the sergeant rail. I stumbled then. Thirteen turns to release the forward. Max torque was five point four. Copy turns and torque on Working forward. On the app. Torque on the aft bolt was four and a half. Copy turns and torque on the aft. Uh, you leave the same settings and go for the center fastener, 28 to 31 turns. Remember, there's no soft dock. No soft dock. Same settings. Bravo, one, counter, two, confirmed. It was five and a half. There's six turns for thirty. Fifteen turns for thirty. Almost no running torque at all. Twenty-five. And our first helmet camera view of the day as Luca Parmitano uh, stopping at thirty turns. That view uh, from his helmet camera, making his way uh, out to the far starboard side of the truss of the International Space Station, where he will set up uh, to begin work to retrieve these two uh, material science uh, experiment packages, the Missy 8 and the Ormate experiment. Alpha 1, I think, is what's next, right? Just configuring my PGT. That is correct. And Shane, I'm ready for some pictures. All right, Luca, looks like you're all set up. We're getting great video of you now. Um, we want uh, pictures uh, of the Ormates on both sides and the pack on both sides, and you can BRT and move around as you need to. We want some good orthogonal shots, the best you can get. Copy. And Chris, uh, before you put the new one in, make sure you uh, do an inspection of the blind mate connectors on the boom and the spare, please. Okay. Parmitano uh, taking pictures of the Ormate experiment. Uh, he will also uh, have an opportunity to take uh, some photos of uh, the alpha magnetic spectrometer that has been uh, collecting uh, invaluable data on dark matter in the universe uh, for the past two years, hinged uh, to the uh, far starboard truss of the International Space Station. Yeah, I'm gonna get the camera now. Copy. Camera is on me. Okay, Shane, I'm gonna move from this position a little uh, uh, later because I cannot get the back from this position. I I got the. Go one side of the of the or mate. Uh, 
Hey, Luca, we copied your moving around. You don't have to have uh, perfect angles. Just do your best uh, um, on both the Ormate and the Peck. Copy. You have video, Shane? Yeah, Chris, we got WVS on both of you. Looks great. Yeah. Wave tube looks clear. The pin receptacles all look free of FOD. EMI bands, there are three, all intact and lying nice and flush. Copy all, Chris. You're good to get the spare now, and uh, when you drive, it'll be Alpha 1, clockwise 2. The view from Chris Cassidy's helmet camera as uh, he retrieves uh, the spare space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller from his uh, crew lock bag. He'll uh, temporarily tether that uh, while he uses his pistol grip tool. Uh, to release uh, two outer fasteners and uh, a couple of bolts holding the failed transmitter receiver controller in place on the Z1 truss. Chris, you're going to drive the center fastener first, 28 to 31 turns to torque. 28 turns on the center. Copy that, Shane. Double checking Alpha 1, clockwise 2. Good settings, Chris. And I've got the PGT in the center. I've got the PGT on the center pole. Here we go. And Luca, not sure if you can see the AMS there or not at nighttime, but if you can get any shots of that, that'd be great. Copy that. We're working on that on the next attack. I don't think I have enough light even for the VC pack right now. Copy, Luca. Do my best. Twenty turns, and uh, we torqued out at two point three foot pounds. I don't believe we're all the way there. In fact, I can see that we're not. Copy, Chris, 20 turns, 2.3, and we're not all the way in, so give us a second. Roger. Hey, Chris, uh, we're ready for a few steps for you. You can uh, change your PGT to Alpha 2, clockwise 2, and uh, we'll try it again. Okay. Alpha 2, clockwise 2. It was 20.4. We'll add that number to this. Copy. Chris Cassidy, uh upping uh, the ante on his pistol grip tool uh, with a higher torque setting, putting a little more muscle uh, electronically into uh, these uh, center fasteners uh, as he installs uh, the spare space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller 
to replace a failed component uh, that went down in December of 2012 and taking down redundancy for the station's KU band communication system. No joy, Shane. Just max step torque out, 3.8. Um, Shane, for the pet, I don't seem to be able to focus. I don't think there is enough light. Uh, should I just keep going with the rest? Yeah, Luca, just uh, best effort there. If, if uh, the picture will take, just take it, even if it doesn't look great, and uh, then we can move on. Copy. And Chris, for you, um, we're going to go Alpha 2, Counter 2. We're going to release the bolt one turn. Alpha 2, Counter 2, one revolution. There it is, 1.2. All right, Chris, now ready for Bravo 1, Clockwise 2. Drive it two turns. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, stopping at two turns. There the torque picked up at one and a half turns into it. Max running torque is three and a half. Ramping up about four. Shane, I'm sorry, I, I went through two turns and turned four turns. We got a red torque light, I stopped and I realized I had gone too far, but you asked. Well, Chris Cassidy uh, continues uh, to uh, set uh, the proper torque settings for his pistol grip tool uh, in an effort to install the spare space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller box. Uh, you're looking at this view from his helmet camera uh, on the opposite side of the International Space Station out on the uh, starboard truss. Luca Parmitano preparing uh, to use uh, his tools. Uh, for the retrieval of a pair of material science experiments, having uh, completed a series of photographs of the Missy 8 uh, material science uh, package, as well as the Ormate package that are mounted uh, out on the starboard truss of the complex. Clockwise two. two. So we've done 20 plus two and a half is 22 and a half plus four. It's about 26 and a half turns if, I, if my math matches yours. I've gone so far. And Chris, we concur. And I'm driving Alpha 2 to torquing. Alpha 2 torqued out zero turns. Copy zero turns. Stand by, Chris. How's it going, Luca? What you working on? I'm taking picture of the uh, D part of the or the pack, and I'm just about to move to the. Uh, forward side of the permit. Copy that. Hey, Chris, back to you. Uh, we'll go Alpha 2, Counter 2, and release the bolt one turn. Alpha 2, Counter 2. 
All right, and I'm back here at the blind mate area, and I can see that there's about a quarter to an eighth of an inch of travel space left. Copy that. Good words, Chris. And say again the settings. Settings are Alpha 2, Counter 2. One turn. Release. All right. Got it. Hey, Luca, for you, we're ready for you to install the Ormate cover. Uh, make sure you align the tether points on the bottom and Stop. prevent side loads. Copy it. Do you still want me to get the pictures? Because I'm working on it. Okay, copy that. I thought you were done with the pictures. Sorry, not yet. I'm more set. Alpha 2, counter 2 doesn't catch. Works out. No chance. We've pushed all the lock bite in as far as it'll go. All right, Chris, we'd like uh, Bravo 1 now, counter 2. Try one turn on that. Bravo 1, counter 2, one turn. One, one turn. There's one turn. Red expected torque light. Copy, Chris. Stand by. Hey, Chris. Uh, now we'd like Bravo one, clockwise two, two turns. Two turns. Two turns. Bravo one, two turns. Clockwise two. One point three turns, eleven point nine foot pounds. Copy one point three turns, torqued out. Okay, I'm complete with the features. All right, sounds Chris Cassidy uh, encountering a, a stubborn bolt uh, as he attempts uh, to uh, install the spare space to ground transmitter receiver controller. This. Not uncommon, of course, uh, with thermal expansion and contraction of uh, this hardware and the harsh environment of space. So uh, the uh, spacewalk community led by spacewalk officer Ernie Bell off thinking about uh, uh, torque settings for the pistol grip tool that Cassidy is using to try to complete the task of installing this uh, spare controller box. Meanwhile, you're looking at a view out of Luca Parmitano's helmet camera as he is looking straight down uh, the barrel of the Ormate experiment, one of two material science experiments out on the starboard truss of the station that he will be uh, releasing payload retention pins on uh, a short time from now to retrieve those two experiments, place them in uh, crew lock bags uh, for return uh, to the Quest airlock. They have been collecting data outside for the past two years. Uh, those uh, two experiment packages, uh, one of which installed by astronauts Drew Feustel and Greg Shamatov on the first of four spacewalks conducted by crew members during the STS-134 mission uh, two years ago. Uh, the Ormate experiment installed by station crew members Mike Fossum and Ron Guerin during uh, the spacewalk they conducted during the final shuttle mission of Atlantis two years ago on STS-135. Like you're in position there. Um, you can align the bottom tether points with the cover and put it on the uh, four mates.
And Luca, next you're going to engage the Velcro strap. You'll remove the ret uh, to the oar mate and cover tether points near the probe, and then put it on your swing arm. Okay, confirm. Now, wait, I'm go for releasing the pit, uh, pit pins. That's correct, Luca. Uh, you'll take out the two pit pins, stow the ore mate on your swing arm, and then reinstall the pit pin. Hey, Chris, looks like you've done a little cleanup there. Nice work in the head. Um, we're ready for PGT again. We're going to go Bravo 2, clockwise 2, one turn only. Okay. Bravo 2, clockwise 2, one turn only. And Shane, I'm completed here. The old mate is in my regard. Copy that. It looks like the pet pens are reinstalled, so nice work. Um, you can now translate up to the PEC. One turn, 15.9, green light working, actually. 0.97 turns, and we get torqued out. Copy, Chris. Stand by. Cassidy uh, continuing his work uh, to install the uh, spare space to ground transmitter receiver controller box. Encountering uh, a stubborn bolt uh, that he uh, continues to work uh, to try to drive uh, to completion. Meanwhile, on the starboard truss, Luca Parmitano has already uh, retrieved the ORMATE experiment from uh, the truss structure uh, and will begin uh, to remove the Missy 8 experiment a short time from now. Hey, Chris, can you uh, go behind there and give us another view and see if you think it's traveled any further? Certainly. I took some pictures before um, of that spot before we just did the Bravo 2. Forty-five minutes into uh, today's spacewalk, about eight minutes away from entering an orbital sunrise. Uh, maybe a tiny bit closer. Well, yeah, a tiny bit closer, but it's, there's still a gap between the metal end of the SGTRC 
and the face of the adapt mating plate. The gap is about an eighth of an inch. Copy all, Chris. Thanks for the view and thanks for the words. Stand by. Working on rotating close to the, the back. Oh, yeah, I see you. I see you right. Now. Good view of uh, the, uh, a moment ago, you saw a good view of the spare uh, space to ground transmitter receiver controller box uh, that Chris Cassidy has been working on uh, to try to bolt in place on the Z1 truss of the station, encountering uh, a bit of resistance uh, to drive uh, the one bolt uh, to completion uh, to have it uh, properly seated. Spacewalk officers uh, want to back uh, the bolts uh, out at the moment, take a look uh, and make sure that uh, they're okay, uh, that the bolts haven't uh, been damaged in any way during uh, this effort to try to uh, drive them uh, into a fully seated position. Closed and the teams are in. Nice Copy, Luca, good job. Um, Next for you, we're going to demate some connectors. So when you're when you're in position, we're going to go after the seven alpha or the red connectors first. So let me know when you're there. Seven alpha, I'm right there. Okay, Luca. First, we're going to demate the seven alpha cap, the red cap from the dummy connector on Juliet seven alpha. Probably need to wrap through, correct? Hey Shane, if you guys need like 15, 20 minutes, it's no problem. I'll just go down and do the MLM cable, power cables. And there's no time pressure. Yeah, on Chris, you. we got a plan for you. Um, it's coming up here in just a second. Roger that. Okay, I just connected that. Turn off the cap. Hey, Chris, here we go. I'm ready for you now. We're going to go Bravo 2, counter 2, take it all the way out and do an inspection on both sides, and then we'll drive it in at Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Okay. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2, demate it, and inspect the threads. Good read back. Okay, Luke, it looks like you're done with that. So next, you're going to demate the Juliet 7 Alpha connector from the PEC, the lower connector. Check no FOD and check the pins. Chris Cassidy will be inspecting uh, the bolt uh, that he's been trying to drive uh, to proper seating for the uh, spare space to ground uh, controller box. Luca Parmitano, meanwhile, is. Uh, breezing through his tasks as uh, he has already removed the ORMATE material science experiment and now is in the process of uh, demating connectors holding the Missy Adic experiment in place. He uh, working out on the starboard truss, 
Chris Cassidy working at the Z1 truss in the middle section of the station's backbone. Yes, it is keyed, Luca. Twenty-eight point four turns it took to release it. Copy twenty-eight point four, Chris. Which is in family of the expected number of turns. Nothing uh, jumps out at me, Shane. It looks, you c I can see a little wear on the bolt all the way up to the last two threads. Copy that, Chris. If you could uh, look at the nut plates, that'd be great. And for Chris and Lucas, sunrise is in about one minute. Roger. Roger that. And I'm, uh, I connected uh, seven alpha to the uh, location. Copy, Luca. Next for you is to mate the seven alpha cap to the PEC. Copy. It works. I can't really see into the nut plate. Too well, Shane. If there's nothing obvious. Okay, can you see the connectors at all, Chris? Yeah, the connectors, they're fine. They're straight, just like before. You want to we'll get closer to them? No, nah, we're good with that. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Drive it all the way in. All right, Andrew. Okay, the copy's connected. Copy, Luca. Nice work. Next, we're going to move over to the seven Bravo connectors. That's the green one. Uh, once you see that, you can demate the seven Bravo copy. cap from the dummy connector. The International Space Station is currently crossing the equator, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, soon to approach the west coast of Mexico. We are about to, to enter an orbital sunrise here. Uh, you're looking at the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy as he continues to struggle a bit uh, to complete uh, the bolting of the spare space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller box. Bravo connector from the PEC, the upper connector. Check no FOD and check pin. And now the view out of Luca Parmitano's helmet camera as he uh, is demating and remating uh, various connectors, uh, completing uh, the removal of the second of two uh, material science experiment packages from the uh, outboard starboard truss of the International Space Station. And I'm driving the torque. Torque. Hey, Chris, when you start driving, stop at 26 turns. Okay. Driving now. Four for 26. I can see the box slowly sucking in. Barely any running torque. It's like point two. Copy. Sixteen turns. Eighteen for twenty-six. Nineteen running torque picking up. Four, five, six, 
Seven pounds on the running short, 22, 23, 25, 26 turns, 7.4 was the max torque it saw, and of course we have a red uh, torque light. Copy, Chris. We'd like you to go Alpha 2 now, clockwise 2 for the remaining turns. Okay. And Shane, the second cap connected and just the T seven Bravo. Copy, looks like you got the connector on the dummy panel and the cap on the pack. Uh, next you can close the T A clamps. Should be two of those. Copy. Be worked. A quarter of a turn, green light. Copy, Chris. Stand by. Hey, Chris, we're ready now. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, drive in as far as you can. Okay. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and we're comfortable to drive the torque in. This will deliver 12 foot-pounds of torque. Here we go. Eleven point eight foot pounds, one point six seven turns. Green torque light. Copy Chris, that gives us about twenty eight turns. We're gonna talk about it for a minute. Nice work. Jane, do you call this box secure? Can I remove the red? And Luca, for you, once you get the uh, TA clamps done. You Spacewalk community here in Mission Control uh, discussing whether or not uh, the space to ground transmitter receiver controller box is in fact seated as uh, the torque on the pistol grip tool was increased, uh, adding a little more uh, mechanical muscle uh, to Chris Cassidy. Uh, the Navy SEAL uh, in the work uh, of driving uh, this uh, bolt in place uh, to secure the spare controller box and restore redundant capability for the station's KU band communication system. Luca Parmitano, meanwhile, in this view from his helmet camera, uh, has completed uh, the mating of, of a variety of connectors uh, out at the uh, starboard truss of the International Space Station, having uh, removed uh, two material science experiments and a good view uh, out there uh, of the uh, work that is being conducted by the crew, our first external view of uh, the spacewalkers. Hey, Chris, can you go check uh, the gap in the back again? Absolutely. Interesting. It's the same as when we last reported, about an eighth of an inch. And then if I look down at the front, there's also about an eighth of an inch where the, um, the little lip just, just after the, or just behind.
behind the bolt where the lip goes to the mating plate, there's about an eighth of an inch gap there as well. Copy, Chris, for those words. Uh, give us a minute to talk about it. Any curveballs over there, Luca? Uh, nope. We're working on it. Sounds like it's going okay. I think I have it. Okay, I have the DC and the, the, the Omega detect. Copy that, Luca. Uh, just kind of look around the worksite, make sure you got everything, and you can translate um, back towards the airlock, pick up your green hook. Copy. You work. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the uh, community here uh, now believes uh, that the f uh, spare controller box uh, is properly seated. Uh, the work uh, that Cassidy has been involved in to uh, back out and drive in uh, this one bolt to secure the uh, spare box into place on the uh, Z1 truss, uh, I, we believe is now complete. And uh, we should have a well-seated uh, spare controller box uh, that, once activated, will restore redundancy to the station's KU band communication system. What kind of settings would we like for those guys? So, Chris, for those, Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. Here we go, Shane. on the forward bolt, 8 for 16, barely any torque, running torque. Copy, should be 10 to 13 turns. Or 10, 10, yeah, 10, my bad. It is 10 and a quarter turns, two and a half foot pounds, green light. Copy on the forward. Well, Cassidy uh, uh, re relieves a bit of the torque on the uh, bolt uh, that uh, he uh, secured, fastening uh, the uh, controller box in place. Luca Parmitano is now moving uh, towards the S-1 truss of the International Space Station, uh, the starboard side of the station, uh, en route to the uh, Quest airlock. Uh, to stow uh, the two material science packages that he uh, removed from the far starboard truss of the complex a few minutes ago. And Chris, looking uh, at your WVS, looks like you got the scoop, um, and you're going to put that on the mutt. You've probably already done that. I can't see it. You can do a socket swap. Yep, yep. So the scoop is on the mutt. The mutt's on the tool bag. And I'm do, I'll do a socket swap right now. Copy. On your way back, Luca? Yep. Outstanding. Nice job.
Well, the two spacewalkers uh, have now passed the one hour mark in their spacewalk for today. Now one hour, five minutes into the uh, 170th spacewalk in support of station assembly and maintenance. Inside the Destiny Laboratory, uh, Karen Nyberg has completed uh, the setup of uh, the Destiny Laboratory Robotics Workstation. She'll be uh, operating uh, the station's Canadarm2 uh, to maneuver Luca Parmitano uh, to and fro as he uh, hauls uh, the radiator grapple bars uh, from their stowed position uh, outboard to both the starboard and port trusses of the International Space Station for installation a bit later in today's spacewalk. The International Space Station flying at an altitude of 260 statute miles from southwest to northeast over the heartland of America, just passing south of St. Louis in an orbit that will carry uh, the complex and its six crew members over Indianapolis, uh, south of Fort Wayne, Indiana, over Toledo, and then over the Great Lakes. Okay, we have a old SGTRC, a round scoop and a wreck inside the bag. We have in the lid a wreck, a trash bag, and a nine inch rigid socket inside of it. On the outside of the bag we have a mutt, ball sack mutt with a wreck and a uh, scoop, the wreck going into the bag, inside the bag. On the back, Cassidy uh, providing an inventory uh, of the uh, failed uh, space to ground transmitter receiver controller that went down in December of 2012, taking down redundancy for the station's KU van system. Uh, the spare now installed and seated on the Z1 truss of the International Space Station at the center of the station's truss. He will uh, return uh, the failed component uh, to the Quest airlock before he presses ahead uh, to uh, set up work uh, for the removal of a failed camera on the mobile base system uh, called a camera light and pan and tilt assembly. Uh, this, um, this setup work uh, will uh, occur in parallel with uh, other work uh, to begin uh, the removal installation of a pair of uh, radiator grapple bars uh, that Cassidy will be joined by uh, Parmitano in uh, accomplishing uh, the radiator grapple bars currently stowed on a payload uh, attachment point on the mobile base system delivered to the station back in March on the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft. Missed the uh, two adjustables on the outside of the bag. Did you have those? Yeah, the adjustable is removed, and the large, small adjustable is still hooked up. Um, just wanted your confirmation you got everything. I have the camera and the RET on my mini workstation. Copy. We got everything, Chris. Um, you can close up the bag, throw it on your BRT, and head back to the airlock. You'll probably see Luca there. Roger that. Uh, I'm still picking up my safety pedal. Copy, Luca. Okay, complete. And I'm also on my way back. Copy, Luca.
Looking around, Shane, I don't see anything remaining. I'm head out. Copy, Chris. And for Chris and Luca, Luca, when you get to the airlock, look like you're close there. We'll have you do your steps first, which are stowing the Missy Peck on the Rets, and then stowing the Ormate with the Red on the Fish Stringer, and then getting all your tools, uh, and we'll head out from there. And then Chris can do his steps after you're complete. Okay, copy. Copy. Hey Shane, I put the uh, bag down here on top of the airlock for just a sec. I'm going to grab Lenny's cable and bring it to the other side of the airlock. Okay, the seat down. The cover is open. Copy, thermal cover open. Luca, you can stow the Missy 8 pack on the large equipment ret and then stow the ore mate with the red on the fish string. It worked. Hey, Chris, uh, we'd, we'd like you just to kind of head to the airlock and just hang out for Luca and wait for him to be done. convenient just to all right I got my hands on this cable I can move it 10 feet and I don't have to deal with this antenna next time hi right, Chris since you're already there we'll go ahead and take you up on it um, you can start routing it it's, it's not serious routing it's just moving it around this antenna okay copy that if you want to head aft there you can get to uh, node 1 handrail 0122 and uh, that's the first place you'll put one of the wire ties on the aft stanchion. Copy that. Okay, the back rested to the large small inside the airlock. Copy, Luca. All right, 
chain. Here, one, two, two. Is uh, hooked up. I can leave it at that. To come back later, or I can, I can do the stove pipe, whatever you like, however you think the timing goes. Yeah. Chris, looks like we've got a few more minutes, so next one is 0103 on the port stanchion. This is Mission Control Houston. Okay, um, yeah, it looks like I have to get out to the, the missy, sorry, the orbit from my uh, arm. One hour, 16 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. The uh, main objective of this first of two spacewalks by uh, Chris Cassidy and Luca Parmitano in as many weeks uh, is complete with the installation of the space to ground transmitter receiver controller box, replacing a failed component uh, that took down redundancy for the station's KU band communication system. Cassidy is uh, now jumping a bit ahead. Uh, he is at uh, the interface uh, between uh, the Unity module and uh, pressurized mating adapter number one uh, that joins Unity and the Zarya module across uh, the U.S.-Russian interface uh, to the International Space Station. Uh, he will be attaching uh, the end of a power cable uh, from uh, Unity uh, uh, to uh, a handrail on uh, that pressurized mating adapter connecting point. Uh, that is uh, the first step uh, in routing uh, this power cable for the future use of it by the uh, multi-purpose laboratory module called Nyoka uh, that will be launched on a Russian proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome at the end of the year to replace uh, the aging piers docking compartment that will be um, removed and deorbited by uh, a Progress uh, resupply ship that in fact will be launched in two weeks from Baikonur. Uh, the new multi-purpose laboratory module will serve a, a triple purpose as a, a research laboratory, as a new docking port, and as an airlock for future Russian spacewalks. Uh, this uh, power cable connection uh, will be mated on a future Russian spacewalk after the Russian side of this cable connecting uh, route is uh, strung from the service module, from the Zvezda service module, on a future Russian spacewalk. So Cassidy, uh, who will uh, now jump ahead uh, to the uh, Installation of this power cable between uh, Unity and uh, pressurized mating adapter number one, uh, while Luca Parmitano uh, is uh, preparing uh, for the um, start of uh, the setup of the uh, space station robotic uh, arm uh, adapters uh, that uh, he will uh, be riding at the end of an articulating portable foot restraint at the end of the arm that will be driven by Karen Nyberg from the robotics workstation inside the Destiny laboratory. Uh, Parmitano uh, as a uh, basically riding at the end of a cherry picker uh, will be maneuvered uh, hither and yon uh, by uh, Nyberg uh, to maneuver radiator grapple bars uh, from uh, their uh, current uh, stowage position on the mobile base system of the, the International Space Station, uh, first out to the starboard uh, radiator uh, area uh, where it will be installed on the starboard truss of the station, and later a second uh, radiator grapple bar uh, will be maneuvered by Parmitano out to the port side of uh, the International Space Station to be installed. These uh, radiator grapple bars uh, were delivered on the SpaceX's Dragon cargo craft back in March and uh, now will be installed for future use in the event a, a radiator fails on the International Space Station and has to be uh, re uh, replaced by a spare uh, that will be uh, used uh, uh, for uh, the radiator grapple bars to maneuver in place for any replacement work that may be required in the future. Uh, this is the old mate is, uh, to the fifth finger with its own rep, and I'm recovering my... Luca, we copy the ormate. Uh, you need to get your PGT, the width adapter, and the socket caddy from the fish stringer. It
All right. We're checking the distance to where again, Shane? The interface between the PMA and the Russian segment? Yeah, uh, from the video, Chris, looks like it reaches, so we're good there. Uh, you can just coil it up. Yep. I will tell my colleague, Sasha, Ms. Sirkin, that there's about a meter and a half left. Copy. And Chris, uh, when you get done, there should be a spare wire tie. Just kind of put that in low profile. Ah, okay. How's it going in there, Luca? I'm just about to rest to my PTT, and there I'm out of here. Oh, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Chris Cassidy uh, moving with alacrity outside uh, the International Space Station uh, has now completed uh, the uh, partial routing of uh, that multipurpose laboratory module power cable. Uh, future work yet to be done on Russian spacewalks to complete uh, the stringing of that cable all the way over to the Russian segment of the International Space Station, ultimately to provide power for this new uh, laboratory module to be launched at the end of the year on a proton rocket from Baikonur, replacing the pier's docking compartment. That's complete chain. All right, Chris, we'll take a glove inspection and then you can head back to the uh, airlock. My gloves are good. Good complete. Uh, I mean, uh, are good. I don't see any castle scratches. And if my handles are down with the mirrors, I can check. Happy all. And uh, my, both my left and my right glove are completely nominal as we egress, and I'm heading back to the airlock. Copy glove checks on both, and get safer handles for Luca. And just for uh, Chris and Luca, big picture, you guys are about 15 minutes ahead of the timeline, looking great, and both uh, Medox limited now at about 7.18. Thank you. Copy. So, Luca, you're going to head out. Uh, okay, Shane, I'm ready for. Yeah, Luca, head out to yeah. ESP2. You're going to go on the Zenith side, and then we're going to go to the forward side of ESP2 to get the APFR. Copy. You work. The APFR referred to by Capcom uh, Shane Kimbrough is the articulating portable foot restraint uh, that will be affixed uh, to the end of the Canadarm2 in which uh, Luca Parmitano will plant his booted feet and uh, be maneuvered around by Karen Nyberg, who will be operating Canadarm2 from uh, the Destiny Laboratories robotics workstation. I have the uh, SGTRC bag working my way back to the airlock. Copy, Chris. And um, have any specific uh, uh, leading that I need to do? Yeah, Luke, we want you to fair lead around the uh, equipment lock end cone. Copy. It worked. Shane, this bag's going in, and an FSC bag's coming out, correct? That is correct, Chris. Hello, Luca. Hey, Chris.
Cassidy and Parmitano uh, are beginning to uh, converge on one another as they uh, maneuver around the outside of the International Space Station, uh, stowing uh, the failed uh, space-to-ground uh, transmitter receiver controller box in its bag uh, back inside the uh, Quest airlock uh, that you're looking at right now, as uh, well as uh, the Missy 8 and Ormate uh, material science experiments that Parmitano uh, retrieved uh, from the far starboard truss of the International Space Station. Their work complete after two years of investigations. A warning and caution for both of you about the RGBs if you're ready for that. That was a great time. That's right. All right, due to entrapment hazard, do not insert your glove into the exposed latch mechanisms. Limit the touch time of the grapple fixture in the APFR ingress aid due to potential extreme hot or cold temps. Cautions, braking torque should be between one and one and a quarter turns to prevent binding and damage to the RGBs. EVA translation on the starboard RGB is only allowed with all four bolts fully torqued or at least less than one and a quarter turn. Avoid quick, quick grabs, cyclical loading, and gross body movements while on the RGB bundle. Pause 15 seconds between cycles of the ratchet wrench to allow any RGB bundle motion to dampen. And avoid contact with the Lee radiative surfaces and grapple fixture target pen. Okay, help you all. Here. Okay. Cassidy and Parmitano uh, approaching the 90 minute mark in today's spacewalk as they uh, prepare now uh, for work associated with uh, the uh, removal of a pair of radiator grapple bars uh, that are mounted on a payload orbital replacement unit attachment point uh, under the acronym of POA uh, that is uh, located on the mobile base system of the uh, International Space Station. Uh, those grapple bars uh, delivered to the station uh, by the Dragon cargo craft uh, by SpaceX uh, back in March. They'll be removed from their temporary parking place on the uh, mobile base system and uh, in tandem uh, installed first on uh, one of them on the starboard uh, truss near the starboard radiator of the International Space Station. Uh, the second uh, of those radiator grapple bars to be installed on the port truss of the uh, station near the port radiator. They would be used uh, in the event uh, of a radiator failure uh, and could be uh, used uh, to maneuver new radiators around and uh, to stow uh, failed radiators in the event uh, that should happen in the future. The uh, signature point, uh, visually at least, of this spacewalk uh, will be the long, sweeping maneuver of Luca Parmitano at the end of the uh, Canadarm2 in the articulating portable foot restraint as he uh, uh, holds on to the uh, radiator grapple bars uh, while being maneuvered over a period of uh, several minutes uh, by Karen Nyberg uh, from the Destiny Laboratories Robotic Workstation uh, from uh, the uh, mobile base system area of the station all the way over first to the starboard side of the station as you see depicted in this uh, in this uh, virtual re uh, reality uh, animation uh, that was generated as part of our spacewalk feature package uh, he then uh, will uh, carry the the port radiator grapple bar uh, all the way from the mobile base system over to the port uh, truss of the station. Uh, these maneuvers will take between 13 and 27 minutes to complete, uh, offering Parmitano an opportunity for a uh, extraordinary scenic view of the world from an altitude of 260 miles. All right, Shane. Um, SGTRC bag is vetted and secured inside the airlock. I have the FSE bag. Ready to me and BRT'd. Coming out. Outstanding, Chris. Thanks. Uh, once you close the thermal cover, give us a safer handle check. Manual isolation is back down. Deploy handle is down. 
Copy, Chris. Uh, we got a short hand over here in about a minute, so if I lose you, I'll get you back on the other side. Okay. This view from Parmitano's helmet camera showing uh, him affixing and uh, securing uh, the portable foot restraint at the end of the uh, Canadarm 2 that he will be mounted on. Chris Cassidy uh, is wrapping up uh, the uh, stowage of uh, the uh, space to ground transmitter receiver controller bag in the Quest airlock. Uh, his next task uh, will be uh, some preparatory work out at the mobile base system. Uh, for the uh, removal of a failed uh, camera uh, on the mobile base system uh, that will be uh, returned to Earth and uh, refurbished uh, for a relaunch uh, to the International Space Station. Hey, Chris, are you in a place where you can look down? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Amazing. And Luca, when you head out, you're going to go uh, via the lab gap spanner. Zenith uh, on the portmost lab strut. Stay inboard of the SSRMS. I will be in about 30 seconds. Oh, never mind. Okay. Where exactly are you? sure you got it? Yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. It was just hidden behind the frame. Ah, uh, copy. And Chris, we didn't hear uh, thermal cover closed. Did you get that? Better. Sorry. Thermal? Yeah. Thermal cover is closed, and I'm on the CETA card. Okay, copy that, Chris. So, Chris, if you need to, you can uh, reconfigure the WIF 2 there, the lower left one as you're looking at it. So just give us the settings if you do that, and then you can stow the FSC bag on the CETA card. Roger, in work. Chris Cassidy uh, is uh, currently uh, at the uh, S0 truss at the midpoint of the station's backbone uh, along uh, the port uh, CETA cart, as it is known, uh, that the acronym for Crew Equipment Translation Aid Cart, a part of the mobile base system, uh, the uh, railroad, if you will, that transports uh, the station's robotic arm uh, up and down the truss of the complex, uh, soon to be joined by Parmitano there, uh, where Parmitano will uh, uh, ingress uh, the portable foot restraint and await uh, his movement uh, uh, with the radiator grapple bars uh, once uh, they are released from their parking place on the uh, payload attachment point on the mobile base system. Meanwhile, uh, Cassidy uh, will be uh, preparing uh, the equipment he will need for the removal of a failed camera on the mast of the mobile base system that will be returned to Earth and refurbished. All right, Luca, first for you, you can install the WIF adapter in the PIP pin. Uh, the tether point should be toward the lead tip, and then give us a pull test. Copy. You work. And Luca, I'm here with you now, so if you need any movement of the arm to reach something, just let me know. Copy. And Chris, I have steps for the bag orientation if you need it. 
Okay, why don't you read them out and I'll let you know. Why All right, not? the flat hinge, Chris, will be starboard, kind of starboard zenith. It's kind of a little bit angled. Um, really, it's from kind of the echo kind of block to Roger. the Charlie with the hinge on delta. That's how it is. Perfect. And where do you like the uh, large, small, adjustable kind of in the echo fox? That should go to Foxtrot. Yeah, that's all complete. All right, Chris, next up for you is retrieve the square scoop from the FSE bag. Stow the RET loose hook. Well, once you do that outside of the FSE bag. Okay. Here in uh, Mission Control, the communications and tracking officer reports uh, that heater power has been applied uh, to the newly installed uh, space-to-ground transmitter receiver controller box. A full checkout of that new component uh, to replace uh, one that failed back in December of last year. Uh, a full checkout of the newly installed unit will not be uh, conducted until this evening. Copy. We're ready, Luca. Any work. And Luca, uh, while you're doing that, can you give us a good pull test on the WIF adapter? Oh, it's good. Copy. Yes. Well, Parmitano uh, prepares uh, to uh, place his feet inside the portable foot restraint at the end of Canadarm 2. Uh, we can tell you that uh, we're about 18 minutes away from reacquiring a downlink television capability through our KU band communication system and our tracking and data relay satellites. I uh, didn't really need to. Chris, two. Copy, Chris. Chris, once you have the scoop, uh, you can head to the uh, MBS mass CLPA via the nadir of the MT. You can local tether around the MBS mass if you need to. And showing the hitch pin is in. The P pin is in. Good pull test. It's installed. Nice work, Luca. Uh, you can now install the APFR into the WIF adapter. 12 o'clock. Papa, Papa, Foxtrot 6. Happy. You work. Hey Shane, I know it says local tether around the mat, but I didn't feel comfortable with that. I'm over on handrail 8409. Copy, Chris. Once you're there, you can install the square scoop on the MBS mass CLPA with the handle oriented away from it, which should be aft. Okay, copy. All in locked. Copy, Chris. You can head back to the port seat of cart.
Chris Cassidy has now completed uh, the initial setup for uh, the removal later in today's spacewalk of the camera light and pan tilt assembly uh, on the mast of the mobile base system. Luca Parmitano is completing uh, the setup of the uh, portable foot restraint at the end of Canadorm 2, and Cassidy uh, momentarily uh, will uh, retrieve a ratchet wrench and a round scoop uh, from his uh, uh, crew equipment bag and uh, begin uh, to set up a pistol grip tool uh, for the release of four bolts holding uh, the first of two radiator grapple bars in place on an attachment point on the mobile base system. Luca, we copied. Uh, we'll get some words for you here in a second. Okay, this is I said it. It's I got it in. I got a good full test. And I got back on black. The APFR is installed. Nice work, Luca. APFR install. We copy. Um, verify the SSRMS and the APFR in a good position for ingress. Uh, you can GCA if you need to, um, and then we'll do a tether swap. I can walk you through that when you're ready. Copy that, sir. Give me, give me one minute to recover all my tethers. Then one turn in config, I'll let you know. Copy. And, and I'm getting a uh, ratchet wrench, a ratchet wrench and a scoop, right? Copy, ratchet wrench and the round scoop. Um, you're going to go the uh, stow the scoop ret loose hook outside the bag, um, and then configure the ratchet with the two inch to counterclockwise. Okay, copy. Okay, and I'm double checking. I got 12, pa 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 pa, clock start 6. And I, I think I'm, I'm definitely in a good position to, to ingress. Okay, copy, Luca. Uh, we'll take the tether swap whenever you're ready. I might, uh... And I'm ready for the tether swap. Okay, you're going to take your white hook. Put it to the Lee handrail. Check the gate close. Hook is locked. A white hook. And hook it, in, and hook it to the Lee rail. And Chris, for you, once you get the ratchet ready, you can uh, break torque about one and a quarter turns on the aft bolts numbers two and three on the starboard grapple bar. Okay. Cassidy in the process of using uh, his pistol grip tool to break the torque on uh, two of the four bolts holding the starboard grapple bar on its attachment point on the mobile base system. Turns. Copy, Chris. Uh, next, you're going to translate to the forward FSE, that's FSE Alpha. Attach the round scoop on the port side of that FSE. Copy. 
Cassidy has uh, now broken the torque on two of the four bolts. Uh, he'll press ahead uh, to complete work on uh, bolts one and four on the starboard grapple bar, setting the stage uh, for the release of those bolts and uh, the removal of the uh, starboard radiator grapple bar uh, for a handoff to Parmitano, who momentarily will be uh, affixed at the uh, end of the uh, Canadarm2 in a portable foot restraint. Good copy, Luca. Next, uh, take your green hook to the lab handrail 0251, the forward stanchion. Ensure EV1's tether is not captured. Chris, once you get the round scoop installed um, on the Ford FSE, you can brake torque on bolts one and four with uh, one and a quarter turn. Okay. Four is in work. That's one and a quarter turns on bolt four. Copy bolt four, Chris. And Luca, for you, once you get set up there, check that both reels are unlocked. Luca, and compare me, 0251. 0251, forward stanchion. Okay, green hook. Here to fill on forward. Copy, Luca. And that's complete. And verify both reels are unlocked. Oh. Green reel is unlocked. And the other reel. I mean, checking, confirm, unlocked. Copy, Luca. Next couple steps for you. Deploy the bolt ingress aid. Bolt one four, complete change. Attach your waist tether and then get in the APFR. And copy bolt one, Chris. And four. Copy, Shane. Chris, got bolts one and four. Uh, you can stow the ratchet on your workstation and configure your PGT to Bravo 7, counter 2. Bravo 7, and we don't expect Bravo 7. That's correct, and now uh, you're going after bolts 1 and 4, 16 to 18 turns each. Cassidy uh, having no problem uh, breaking the torque on the four bolts holding the starboard radiator grapple bar in place on the mobile base system's payload attachment point. Counterclockwise two. He's now uh, setting uh, his pistol grip tool uh, for the removal of the first two out of four bolts holding uh, the grapple bar in place. Luca Parmitano about to uh, place his feet in the portable foot restraint at the end of Canadarm 2 as we are one hour, 50 minutes into today's spacewalk. Running torque backing off. It took about 10 turns for the running torque to back off. That's good for us to know on the uh, install. Yeah, good call, Chris. We copy. I about it. 14 and a half turns. I about it. 14 and a half turns. Okay, make a note. Um, we can expect the first four, five, six turns to be low, and the last ten turns to be in the 10 or 11 foot-pound range on the install. Copy, 
copy, Chris. Uh, we think it might be a little different just due to the different uh, nuts on the other side. So, uh, but we'll uh, put that down and uh, let you remind you when you get there. Copy that. And you guys probably can tell, but uh, the sun is setting here in a few seconds. All right, Shane, I have Bravo 7, counter 2, set, and bolt 4 ready to go. We copy, we're ready. Fourteen pounds, max torque, pretty high. Still. Five, six turns, I feel it backing off. Seven. Nine, ten turns, running torque's about zero now. And it popped out. Fifteen and a half turns. 14.1 was the max torque. One and four bolts are released. Copy all, Chris. Uh, you can move the round scoop now to the starboard side of the okay. Ford FSE. Make sure your tether is routed for translation back to the seated cart via the port grapple bar. Copy all. So you getting in, Luca? I am in. Copy that, Luca. Let me know when you are ready for the maneuver to back off. Okay, um, I am ready. Um, it'd be great to have uh, Chris give me a visual check of the booth because it's the first time I do it in orbit then. Parmitano now uh, affixed to the end of the Canadarm2, about to be maneuvered uh, to what is known as a backoff position by um, flight engineer Karen Nyberg, operating from a robotics workstation inside the Destiny Laboratory. From you, and once you get going, um, you can do the socket swap to the 587.8-inch uh, extension with a pull test. Copy, and I got the both gloves are nominal. And, um, Karen, whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Luca, I Chris had a chance to take a look yet? Yeah, I can see your heels. And they are in. Thanks, Chris. Possible feelings. Yeah, my headlights are right on your heels. You're in solidly. Okay, Luca, this is going to be forward only, about a meter and a half. Copy that. I'm ready for the motion. Starting motion.
coming out. Copy. And Chris, I'm not sure if you, uh, we need a fit check if you, if you can still do that um, on bolt number three on FSC Bravo towards the uh, aft side. Roger that. And the scoop is installed on the, um, the arbor side. Copy that. This is Mission Control Houston as we approach the two hour mark into today's spacewalk. Uh, Luca Parmitano is uh, being maneuvered uh, to a back off position uh, with uh, one of two uh, radiator grapple bars uh, that he will be transported with uh, by Karen Nyberg operating the station's robotic arm over to the S-1 truss of the International Space Station uh, for its ultimate stowage along with flight support equipment. Chris Cassidy, uh, who released a, a quartet of bolts holding that radiator grapple bar in place on the mobile base system, now will work uh, to remove its associated flight support equipment. The good thing is, if it gets tight, I'll just take the PGT off and do it by hand. But there's no, it just spins freely on those last little bits. Okay, the, the nine inches are installed, and I got a good full test, and I'm ready to tighten up the. You say the adjustable on the PGT? That's correct, Luca. Just tighten that up a little bit, and then you can configure your PGT Alpha 3 clockwise 1. Copy, and I'm going to turn it on first. And Chris, for you, you can stow the ratchet wrench in the FSC bag, attach your waist tether to the port grapple bar, and give us a glove inspection. Race tethers complete. Left and right gloves both nominal. Working on the ratchet wrench. Copy, good gloves. And Shane, I have a need to call on the PGT. Yes, uh, Luca, would you need a cow? And Luca, um, when you're ready to go, this is a short joke cast, and I'm ready to hit proceed. And uh, um, I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay, starting motion. Okay, I got uh, Alpha 3, and I need the clock uh, counterclockwise. Alpha 3, clockwise 1, Luca. Sorry, clockwise 1, coming up. And then you can stow your PGT once that's done. Copy, in work. And Luca, as you're moving, keep an eye on the ingress A, just make sure it's tucked in. And I put Cassidy and Parmitano working in tandem uh, for the final. Uh, completion of uh, the uh, release of these four bolts holding one of two radiator grapple bars uh, in place on the mobile base system. Yep. This uh, first of the two uh, grapple bars uh, will be uh, maneuvered by Parmitano at the end of the Canadarm 2 over to the 
starboard one truss of the International Space Station for installation uh, next to the starboard radiator that provides heat dissipation for station systems. Uh, these two grapple bars that are being uh, relocated uh, at opposite ends of the station's truss today uh, would be used uh, in the event of a radiator failure that requires uh, either one of the two radiators on the station to be replaced.